Hi all, Simon Fermenter here. Welcome to this video. What's all the fuss about CBD? Is it effective for people experiencing fatigue, pain, inflammation and insomnia? Are there supplements that are more effective? I'll talk about that and one cheap ingredient that is more effective for pain and inflammation according to research. So let's start with some basics. Cannabis is the name for a group of plants. One variety is marijuana and another is hemp. They have a number of chemicals in them called cannabinoids. They have various effects. Marijuana plants have been bred to have higher levels of a psychoactive chemical known as THC. Psychoactive, otherwise known as psychotropic, means that it changes a person's mental state by affecting the way the brain and the nervous system work. Alcohol and caffeine are psychoactive drugs. Hemp plants have higher levels of a chemical called CBD, which is not psychoactive and was reputed to have pain-relieving and calming effects. The CBD industry is big business, worth about one billion. However, what is the research on CBD? Well, Dr. Michael Murray, who's a practitioner of natural medicine, is interested in research-based approaches. He says that there is research on CBD and THC combined, but not much on CBD. So there is research on CBD and insomnia. One study found that giving 300 to 450 milligrams per day was effective. But products suggest taking doses of somewhere between 5 and 25 milligrams. High doses of CBD, around 450 to 600 milligrams, were given to people with anxiety, but they didn't show much benefit. Now you'll probably find videos on YouTube saying that CBD helped some people with anxiety, but obviously anecdotal evidence isn't the same as solid research. So what about pain? Dr. Michael Murray says that there are no studies showing that CBD is effective for pain relief, for example, chronic fibromyalgia type pain. A study using an animal model showed that applying CBD to the skin could help lower pain and inflammation due to arthritis. Another study demonstrated the mechanism by which CBD inhibits inflammatory and neuropathic pain, two of the most difficult types of chronic pain to treat. But Harvard Medical School says that more studies in humans are needed in this area to substantiate the claims of CBD proponents about pain control. There are quality issues. In the UK, for instance, regulation is in its infancy. I suspect it's the same in other countries. In one study, researchers tested a number of products and one product didn't actually contain any CBD. So next question, is it safe? According to the World Health Organization, CBD is well tolerated even in large doses. The WHO suggests that any side effects that occur with CBD use are likely the result of drug-to-drug -drug interactions between CBD and other medications you may be taking. CBD can increase the level in your blood of a blood thinner, and it can raise levels of certain other medications in your blood. One researcher from King's College said that we don't know enough about the interactions with other drugs. Another source says that there are side effects of CBD that include nausea, fatigue and irritability. So, are there alternatives that are more effective? Dr. Murray says that taking a comprehensive approach can help address fatigue, pain, inflammation and insomnia. He talks about the role of the endocannabinoid system. This system is responsible for maintaining homeostasis, the tendency of the body to move towards a relatively stable equilibrium. When it is out of balance, this is known as clinical endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome, we get disease, including fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome. This may be caused by poor diet, lack of exercise, drug abuse, environmental toxins, genetic or other factors. Prolonged exposure to stress depletes the endocannabinoid system, and this in turn has an adverse effect on a plethora of physiological processes. And this can result in reduced ability or inability to adapt to chronic stress, which of course is going to cause us lots of problems. He advocates focusing on diet. So frequent consumption of seasonal, locally grown fruit, vegetables, beans, nuts and seed. Minimally processed foods, low consumption of refined sugar and honey. 
He suggests that fats support the endocannabinoid system. So foods that contain omega-3 fatty acids, cold water fish such as salmon, mackerel, herring, trout, tuna and sardines. Now obviously there are concerns about fish and pollution, tuna, mercury levels, salmon in particular there's uh, concerns about the quality because of pollution. He also suggests taking nuts and seeds and consuming oils such as olive and avocado oil. He also suggests taking a high quality fish oil supplement that provides at least 1,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA daily. Obviously with supplements always consult your doctor especially if taking medication. So let's focus on supplements. So for pain relief research shows that palmitol ethanolamide or PEA is effective for pain relief with low side effects. This includes being effective for fibromyalgia and peripheral neuropathies. According to research, it's more effective than ibuprofen. 400 milligrams was shown to be effective for pain. And it's been shown to be helpful in some other applications, namely anxiety, depression. He says that a dose of 600 milligrams can produce fantastic results for those conditions. There are also over a hundred double-blind placebo-controlled studies with ginger in the reduction of pain and inflammation. Curcumin is good, according to Dr. Murray, but ginger is better. He also says that it's important to address stress via stress reduction techniques, exercise. Obviously, that can be an issue for people with ME/CFS fibromyalgia. And there are certain adaptogens, in particular Siberian ginseng, Panax ginseng, rhodiola and ashwagandha. Quite a few clients have mentioned rhodiola recently, having been told by their naturopath or nutritionist that it might help. These adaptogens help our body and brain and emotions deal with stress better. Dr. Murray also talks about a product called Pharma GABA that can promote relaxation, reducing cortisol and other markers, decreasing the amount of time required to go to sleep and increasing the time spent in deep sleep stages and REM sleep. So I hope that's given you some food for thought. For more tips, do join my Facebook group by clicking the link below. Wishing you great health. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.